Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Nous démarrons avec quelques minutes de retard parce qu'il y avait une autre conférence dans cette salle juste avant et qu'il a fallu se brancher. Donc tout va bien maintenant. Nous vous remercions donc d'être si nombreux aussi bien en ligne que aussi sur place donc à l'ONU à Genève. Nous allons donc parler de la traite des personnes dans les conflits armés et les situations de post-conflit. Euh, le, ce travail euh, a été préparé par euh, donc Caritas Internationalis, le Secours catholique Caritas France, Coatnet et l'Ordre de Malte. Euh, et le réseau Coatnet, avec ses 26 membres présents dans différents continents, assiste chaque jour en fait, à des situations de conflit armé et agit à la fois pour prévenir les situations d'exploitation et de traite des êtres humains et pour accompagner euh, les victimes. Qu'il s'agisse d'exploitation sexuelle, vente de bébés, exploitation par le travail, contrainte à commettre des crimes ou à mendier des mariages forcés sous prétexte d'une vie meilleure, d'utilisation d'enfants dans les conflits armés, Face à l'horreur de la guerre, des hommes, des femmes, des enfants sont parfois exploités pour survivre. Il y a quelques années, nous avions fait une recherche-action euh, sur euh, à la fois l'Europe et le Moyen-Orient, euh, sur la traite des êtres humains dans les situations de conflit et post-conflit. Donc, C'est un document euh, qui est euh, disponible. Et c'est un document qui nous a bien servi, euh, finalement, euh, il y a quelques temps, quand la, la, la guerre a été déclarée en, en Ukraine, euh, pour nous, Européens, euh, parce qu'en euh, Europe, la guerre en Ukraine a contribué à révéler ce phénomène dans le pays même, mais aussi dans les pays frontaliers et dans les pays euh, qui accueillaient euh, les personnes déplacées à cause de la guerre. Les réponses apportées ne touche euh, malheureusement pas toutes les nationalités. C'est une grosse difficulté qu'on trouve ici aujourd'hui actuellement par rapport à la guerre en Ukraine. Et pourtant, euh, donc des outils ont été faits pour que, à cette occasion-là, et vous en voyez euh, sur l'écran, euh, des, des personnes, enfants ou adultes, puissent être prévenus que euh, cette situation de conflit pouvait euh, amener euh, des situations euh, donc, de traite des êtres humains. Euh, nous avons euh, donc euh, maintenant euh, travaillé sur ce pays-là, mais nous avons aussi euh, aujourd'hui prévu de parler euh, de la Roumanie, puisque la Roumanie était un pays proche euh, de frontières à un pays en guerre. Et puis, euh, nous avons aussi euh, prévu euh, de parler donc du Liban, euh, Liban qui a accueilli euh, plusieurs des migrants qui venaient de différents euh, pays euh, de, 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 des périodes de guerre. Et euh, voilà. Donc, euh, la lutte contre la traite des êtres humains, pour nous, doit s'adresser à tous les hommes, les femmes, les enfants, quel que soit leur pays d'origine. Et ce n'est malheureusement pas le cas aujourd'hui. À l'échelle mondiale, il est donc important de collaborer et d'apprendre des expériences de chacun. Un appel pour une meilleure coopération contre la traite des êtres humains dans les situations de conflit et de post-conflit est donc tout à fait nécessaire. Voilà, le, donc, euh, le, le programme d'aujourd'hui euh, était donc euh, celui que, que je viens de, de présenter. Euh, nous allons euh, entendre ces différentes personnes et à la suite, nous pourrons euh, échanger. Donc, je donne d'abord la parole à Michel Vetet. Michel Vetet, donc, de l'Ordre souverain de Malte, euh, qui euh, donc va démarrer euh, ce, ce colloque. Merci, Geneviève. Uh, thank you to Caritas and to the permanent missions co-sponsoring this event. So actually, thank you. I see you are here, Italy, Costa Rica, and uh, others. Thank you very much. Uh, Caritas, Ciudad Malta, and other FBOs, faith-based organizations, have been very active in preventing and combating human trafficking in armed conflicts by advocating for and acting on behalf of victims. This is done by assisting, protecting, and rehabilitating victims and survivors. According to recent research by contemporary slavery in armed conflict, a data set supported by Nottingham University 
human trafficking occurred in 90, 90% of conflicts that took place between 1989 and 2016. Some forms of trafficking are particularly prevalent in the context of armed conflict, such as sexual exploitation, enslavement, forced marriage, forced labor to support military operations, recruitment and exploitation of child soldiers, and removal of organs to treat injured fighters or finance operations. Unfortunately, even UN peacekeepers and personnel have sexually exploited and abused the very citizens they were tasked with protecting. And US peacekeepers faced allegations of sexual exploitation or abuse in countries including the Balkans, the Central African Republic, Haiti, and South Sudan. According to the Council of Foreign on Foreign Relations, 2019 report, Understanding Human Trafficking in Conflict, the security implications of human trafficking, armed groups often exploit members of ethnic minorities, people attempting to flee conflict or abductees, forcing them to serve as porters, transport heavy military equipment, or assist in looting and pillaging. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, armed groups forced internally displaced persons to work in gold and mine oil mines. In post-conflict situations, as countries start rebuilding societies' infrastructure, the demand for cheap labor may also lead to an increase in trafficking. In Iraq, Ukrainian construction workers were held against their will and subjected to forced labor at construction sites. Next. Uh, we have a wide spectrum of international legal instruments which should be better used for the protection of human trafficking victims in armed conflicts. Human rights, which are both applicable in peace and in war, international maritime law applicable in armed conflicts, international criminal law, and uh, you should know that uh, human trafficking unfortunately could qualify as a war crime or a crime against humanity, refugee law, as well as labor law, international maritime law, without forgetting both Palermo Protocols uh, of 2000 uh, against transnational organized crime. We should know that uh, all states parties, so all states parties to the 1914 Geneva Conventions have the individual and collective responsibility to and respect and ensure respect for international maritime law and should not forget victims of human trafficking civilians or detainees, and wounded too often overlooked. In Resolution 2031 of December 2016, the UN Security Council requested the Secretary General to take steps to improve the collection of data, monitoring and analysis of trafficking in persons in the context of armed conflict. In November 2017, the Security Council addressed the topic in Resolution 2388, and reiterated its deep concern that trafficking in persons in areas affected by armed conflict continues to occur. The Security Council reiterated its condemnation of all acts of trafficking undertaken by the so-called Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, Boko Haram, al shabaab the Lord Resistance Army, and other terrorist or armed groups for the purpose of sexual slavery, sexual exploitation, and forced labor. Criminal prosecution of traffickers in armed conflicts have been extremely rare in comparison to the number of victims. In addition to criminal justice, we should promote restorative justice, promoting the rehabilitation of victims and offenders through reconciliation. Theodor Multa regularly contributes to the reports of the Special Representative of the Secretary General for Children and Armed Conflict, uh, Mrs. Uh, Virginia Gamba, as well as to the reports of the Special Rapporteurs of the Human Rights Council on trafficking persons, on contemporary forms of slavery, and on the sale and exploitation of children. The Order Multa runs medical and social humanitarian projects in 120 countries and is especially involved in helping victims of armed conflicts in Ukraine, 
Syria, the Democratic Republic of Congo, South Sudan, Myanmar, Haiti, and the Philippines. Since the beginning of the war in Ukraine, the Order of Malta has conducted an awareness raising campaign to help prevent women and children from being victimized by traffickers in Ukraine, Poland, Romania, and Germany. And you have to know that the Order of Malta offers a free online course on human trafficking for helpers in English, French, German, and Italian. And in 26 webinars since October 2020, the Order of Malta has focused on the rehabilitation of survivors and victims, as well as on the need and limits of criminal prosecution. In conclusion, facing an increasing number of victims of, of human trafficking in armed conflict, the Ordo Malta calls for an improved cooperation against human trafficking in armed conflict and post-conflictual situation between all stakeholders, governments, all parties to conflicts, religious organizations and leaders, business, media, academia, without forgetting victims and survivors. And my last slide, Madam Chairman, <laughs> at the end of the last century, we obtained two results no one expected. Those were two coalitions. In 97, that was the Ottawa Convention banning anti-personal mines. In 1998, that was the ICC uh, statute, Rome statute, and it's a similar coalition that we need now to try to abolish contemporary slavery. Thank you for your support. We all need you to be part of this coalition to end contemporary slavery. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Michel, pour cette euh, introduction très fouillée. Et je vais donner maintenant la parole, en fait, à Virginia Gamba, donc, qui l'a parlé tout à l'heure, de Produgliétaire, qui est la représentante spéciale du secrétaire général de l'ONU pour les questions concernant le sort des enfants en temps de conflit armé. Thank you to the organizers for including me in this important event and for shedding light on the issue of human trafficking in conflict and post-conflict situations. My mandate monitors the six grave violations against children in armed conflict, including recruitment and use, rape and other forms of sexual violence, killing and maiming, attacks on schools and hospitals, abduction, and the denial of humanitarian access. These violations are interconnected and multi-layered in nature. The rising cross-border dimension of conflict poses an additional threat to the protection of children and requires concerted efforts beyond conflict areas in order to identify and track risks and vulnerabilities, particularly of children who are abducted and may also cross borders. This is especially relevant to the cases of abduction for the purposes of trafficking. In recent years, abductions have been on the rise in the conflict situations on my agenda. In the last Secretary General's annual report on children and armed conflict, 3,459 children, of which 2,399 were boys, 1,038 were girls and 22 of sex unknown were abducted, making a 20% increase from the previous year. The abduction of girls alone has increased by 40%, and almost all abduction incidents were attributed to armed groups with the highest numbers verified in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Somalia, the Lake Chad Basin, Burkina Faso, and Nigeria. Abduction is often a precursor for other grave violations. A child abducted becomes more vulnerable to the recruitment and use or other forms of exploitation, including forced labor, forced marriage, and sexual exploitation and slavery, to name but a few. The motivations of the perpetrators are as varied as the purpose of the violations, and the impact on children is differentiated, intersecting with factors related to gender, race and ethnicity, and disability. 
refugee, displaced, and stateless children are particularly at risk to trafficking and grave violations in conflict situations, as are indigenous children and children of minorities. From my mandate's perspective and echoing the spirit of today's event, more research needs to be done to understand the linkages between child trafficking and the six grave violations. For this reason, the Special Rapporteur on Human Trafficking, especially women and children, and I are commencing a dedicated study to further analyze the nexus between trafficking of children and grave violations, and to improve the way we address the links between abduction and human trafficking purposes, and those between these two evils and other violations monitored through the children and armed conflict agenda, such as recruitment and use and rape and other forms of sexual violence. The result of the study will also be presented at the Interagency Coordination Group Against Trafficking in Persons, building on the group's wide range of expertise on the topic. Last July, at the United Nations, we launched, in the presence of the Special Rapporteur, a guidance note on abduction aimed at our monitors on the ground. The guidance is in part a tool for understanding and refining the definitions of abduction, particularly when examining cross-border contexts, including on child trafficking and its linkages to abduction and the other grave violations. I encourage you to reference the guidance note available on my office's website in your work, as we are hoping that it could become the initial step in interagency and or programmatic discussions in the quest to understand and combat trafficking. What else can be done to address child trafficking in conflict situations? At the local, national and regional levels, public awareness and early warning mechanisms can contribute to prevention efforts against abduction, including its links to trafficking and genetic violence against children. For instance, through halting attacks on schools and safeguarding children's right to education. Similarly, more efforts to register children at birth, granting them the right to identity in accordance with Article 8 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child is a critical first step to ensuring children's protection in contexts liable to abduction and other related violations and abuses. I have committed myself and my office to, in collaboration with relevant partners, support governments and regional organizations in their efforts and better shield children from suffering these and other violations. I believe that we can work together so that when children are released or escape captors, they're adequately supported and reintegrated safely back into their communities. In so doing, we must ensure that their specific needs are addressed in a comprehensive and sustainable way, while being mindful of age and gender specific needs. I thank you. Merci beaucoup, Virginia Gomba. Uh, C'est, ça me donne déjà plein de priorités en fait mondiales pour lutter contre la traite des êtres humains résultant des conflits. Euh, je vais maintenant donner la parole à Natalia, Natalia Olinska, qui est responsable des projets de lutte contre la traite des êtres humains à Caritas Ukraine. Elle vit en Ukraine, c'est une citoyenne ukrainienne, et elle est venue aujourd'hui pour nous parler de la situation euh, aujourd'hui en Ukraine. Dears ladies and gentlemen, I have only six minutes to tell you so many things, and uh, I uh, decided to tell you uh, more the real stories of victims uh, who survived in trafficking in Ukraine in the country of war, of armed conflict. I think their voices should be heard. Anna, 31 years old, Irpin. There was only water in the basement where we were hiding. Me and my mother survived but we were afraid to go out. Then another stranger came, he separated us and raped me. After that, he proposed that I give sexual services to other men. 
Of course, I refused. Then this man called somebody and two other Russian-speaking men came and raped me again. So Anna was forced to give sex to many men to save her life and the life of her mother. Anna was depressed, ashamed and shocked. But she had to give sex for her survival, food and water. She felt terribly sick and dirty. She was violated, beaten and exhausted. She couldn't go out of the house. She had no telephone, couldn't ask anybody to help her. There were Russians occupiers everywhere. So for two or three weeks, she was sexually exploited by many men. Irina, 33 years old, the village of Adivka near Kyiv, very distant, remote village with 300 houses. She was brutally raped and sexually exploited by many Russian soldiers, while her husband was forced to stand naked in front of the house in the freezing water and her child sometimes had to watch everything. Occupiers organized brothels in, in six, or, sorry, in four houses of this village, and they, like pimps, took money from their mates for sex with young Ukrainian women. Ksenia, 19 years old. She is from the western part of Ukraine. At the beginning of war, she lost her job and was offered a work in Poland. Though she once refused, but because of uncertain situation in the country and her vulnerability, she was easily recruited and appeared in Poland in underground brothel and was sexually exploited for several months. So a lot of Ukrainian women, being in a vulnerable state, go abroad to the foreign countries some recruiters or traffickers offer them free transportation and or accommodation, later begin to exploit them, like domestic servitude or sexual. After the outbreak of full-scale war in Ukraine, the violation of human rights of civilians increased very much. We faced the severe and cruel cases of sexual violation and sex sexual exploitation of women and girls. It happened at the occupied territories of Ukraine, like Kyiv, Chernihiv, Kherson, and other regions. For instance, in, in Irpin, not far from Kyiv, there was a group of at least 20 women and girls, young girls, who were raped and sexually exploited by Russian soldiers. After release of this town, these girls and women were rescued, but some of them committed suicide. They could not survive such shame violence, pain, and desperation. In one horrific case alone, the body of a seven-year-old girl exhumed from a mass grave in Bucha was discovered to have seven different traces of sperm believed to belong to different Russian soldiers. So it means that this child was sexually exploited and raped and she is dead now. The United Nations has verified more than a hundred cases of rape or sexual assault since the beginning of the war, but I think it is only verified cases and it's only the tip of iceberg. The age of the victims of sexual violence ranges from four to 82 years old. Children, the most vulnerable group of population According to Ukrainian government figures, an estimated 464 children have been killed so far in the war and more than 935 injured. More than 16,000 of children were forcibly deported to Russia. First, the Russian Ministry of Defense, over 300,000 children were forcibly transferred to Russia only for five months of war. Russia state media chain, uh, ch channels had reported uh, the figures uh, that are higher, more than 700,000. So according to the Presidential Commissioner for Children's Rights, 20% of Ukrainian children stay in Russian Federation or occupied territories. Ukrainian children are trafficked uh, to Russia for the purpose of 
labor or sex exploitation, for organ removal, for the programming them and to be and making them to be child soldiers and fight against uh, their country. Children are forcibly deported to be brainwashed and to destroy their Ukrainian identity. And trafficking of Ukrainians could be considered as a part of genocide. So uh, it is one of the biggest humanitarian crises in the world after the Second World War. You can see the numbers of uh, millions of Ukrainian refugees, internally displaced people. You can see the numbers of uh, vulnerability of the population and uh, the rights of our people are still violated right now at this time. Talking about human trafficking, we can see that, ca that cases of trafficking in Ukraine during armed conflict uh, increased. The, uh, they became more cruel, awful, awful and uh, uh, very difficult to work with victims of sexual exploitation, especially. Uh, the traffickers uh, uh, have easy prey because almost all Ukrainians are very vulnerable during this conflict. We have a lot of challenges in Ukraine, but also NGOs uh, and organizations who are still working in Ukraine uh, we um, have a lot of problems and challenges, and uh, we have the problems with statistics, uh, with um, qualified uh, psychologists and psychotherapists. We lack of uh, uh, personnel, of finances to uh, be able to help uh, those victims who survived and to prevent at least suicide among them. As the conclusion, I can say that uh, at war time, at the time of war conflict, trafficking is increasing very much. Uh, sexual exploitation is increasing very much. And uh, exploitation of children and trafficking of children as the most vulnerable group of population is increasing very much. Finishing my speech, I would like to cite the quote from the statement of Caritas Ukraine that was made at the 76th session of the United National General High-Level Meeting of the General Assembly on the appraisal of the UN Global Plan of Action to Combat Trafficking in Persons. Our deep concern and appeal is that we won't be able to combat human trafficking without promoting inevitable values such as dignity, equality, sympathy, kindness, tolerance, respect, and love as cross-cutting issues in our human family. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Natalia, pour ces témoignages, pour uh, cette analyse aussi. Et uh, je vais sans attendre donner la parole à Kodruta Fernea, qui est présidente de l'Action catholique de Roumanie, parce qu'il nous a semblé important aussi de voir euh, la, la question des personnes euh, qui migrent, qui fuient la guerre et euh, qui se retrouvent donc dans les pays frontaliers, d'une part. When we recognize the worth of every individual, we initiate the first step towards compassionate care, which yields benefits for both the person giving and the one receiving. This interaction is not one-sided, but rather generates a reciprocal exchange of kindness and respect. Every year, up to 2 million people worldwide are trafficked, including men, women, and children. The dream of a better life has become a trap that makes each of us vulnerable to traffickers. The National Agency Against Trafficking in Person in Romania reported 500 cases in 2022 of Romanian citizens, victims of human trafficking, exploited in Romania or other countries. 
women are the majority of the victims and sexual exploitation is the most common form of abuse. There is no official data about other nationalities trafficked or exploited on the territory of Romania, but if not official data is recorded, this cannot be understood that trafficking is not happening. The instability and confusion created by conflict are enabling traffickers to operate more easily and avoid law enforcement. Several vulnerabilities can make refugees crossing borders exposed to human trafficking. One of the most significant is the absence of proper documentation, which can force individuals to rely on smugglers who exploit their vulnerability of trafficking for trafficking purposes. Refugees are particularly vulnerable to trafficking due to the lack of support of their trust networks, like family, friends, or acquaintances, and challenges of navigating unfamiliar environments. Their lack of financial resources made them more susceptible to fraudulent job opportunities and other promises of aid from traffickers. Language barriers is also a vulnerability. Refugees may not know the language of the country they are entering in or any other international language, which can make it difficult for them to communicate with authorities and leave them more open to exploitation. Furthermore, limited access to resources and services is another vulnerability. Conflict zones never have enough resources or services to help vulnerable population, including victims of human trafficking, make it more challenging to identify and assist them. Some of anti-trafficking initiatives at Romanian border with Ukraine address the vulnerabilities mentioned before. From the very first day of the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, an impressive mobilization took place in Romania, involving authorities, NGOs, people who wanted to help. From facilities for Ukrainian refugees offered by the government to basic assistance processing to bilingual online platforms that offer information to help them navigate in Romania and find housing and employment and many other initiatives in order to offer them at least a bit of concrete support and this period very difficult of their lives. At most border crossing points, in addition to emergency kits, information was also provided regarding safety and security measures and the minimum precautions to prevent the falling victims of human trafficking. The language barrier in communication was overcome with the help of volunteers who provided bilingual translations of materials and information received. Regarding the prevention of human trafficking, there was a coordination between organizations that provided support at the borders and those who ensured permanent presence at transit or hospitality points to creating networks of trust all across Romania. I will briefly stop just on one of the experiences that I personally lived through. In the first day of the conflict outbreak, I accompanied, not physically, a Ukrainian family from Odessa who wanted to reach their acquaintances in Germany. I offer guidance, assistance, and support so that their journey to Romania will be a bit easier by helping them to find places to rest and people who offer them what they need in that precise moment. Like me, many others member of Catholic Action Romania did the same. Like me, members of Catholic Action receive an integral human and spiritual training in our organization that is essential elements of preventing human trafficking, knowing how to act when everyday life put us in the front of these possible victims of this plague. Addressing human trafficking is a complex issue that requires a multi-phase approach. Raising awareness, providing support to victims, 
cooperating with international organization are some of the main actions that faith-based organizations are collaborating upon in order to reduce the risk of human trafficking. Catholic Action in Romania, in partnership with other national organizations across the country, like Caritas, Maltese Aid, or Polping, are collaborating to train members on Catholic social teaching, empowering them to defend life and dignity of the most vulnerable. Our initiatives are including awareness raising, training, technical assistance, and integration services for those in need, human trafficking victims included. We are doing this because together we can see those who cannot be seen, together we can listen those unheard, together we can give voice to those who are voiceless. Thank you. Merci beaucoup, Corduta. Euh, on va continuer un peu euh, notre tour euh, du monde. Nous allons aller maintenant en fait, euh, au Liban, euh, où nous allons euh, entendre Essen Saya, donc, qui est euh, responsable de, du département de la protection à Caritas Liban et aussi membre de Coatnet, et qui euh, nous présente la situation euh, sur place. Greetings everyone, it's a great honor and pleasure for Caritas Lebanon to participate with you today. Protection of the human life can be costly, but that so is the neglect of that protection. I mention here what Pope Francis said, human trafficking is an open wound on the body of contemporary society, a scourge upon the body of Christ. Our aim is to build the bridges between the societies to fight human trafficking. Access to justice to combat human trafficking remains confined alone for achieving the goal, unless accompanied by what is essential, and that is a door for mercy. Since October 2019, Lebanon has been assailed by compounded and overlapping crises, a severe economic and financial crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic, the port of Beirut explosion, and most recently, a food security crisis as a result of the war in Ukraine. The crisis has led to a sharp deterioration of the exchange rates, keeping inflation rates, the refugees and migrants in Lebanon, a crisis within a crisis. As a consequence of the economic crisis, it's estimated that more than half of the Lebanese population is living below the poverty line, additional to refugees and migrant workers who are living in extreme poverty in Lebanon. Lebanon is a small country and a country of destination for many Asian and African domestic workers. 51% of the residents are migrants and refugees. Migrant domestic workers are amongst the most vulnerable migrant workers in recruitment and work in the Arab states, yet they contribute substantially to a well-functioning economy. Their vulnerability stems from a number of factors, like the exclusion of domestic work from the protection of the labor law and legal redress, the recruitment process, and the sponsorship or the kapala system. Women particularly, if they were divorced or displaced, Adolescent girls, women with disabilities, and older women are the most at risk of human trafficking. Additional forms can include physical violence, emotional, verbal, and psychological violence, sexual violence and sexual harassment, denial of resources and opportunities, and early or forced marriage. So survivors require holistic, specialized care, including legal, medical, and protection services. A comprehensive case management should be provided to victims. As challenging and uh, problems, both Lebanese migrants and refugees became vulnerable, especially uh, with the lack of medical assistance, no hospitals receiving immediately the mental health cases, shortage in medications, and if available at very high prices, the risk of evictions, most of them they are at risk of being evicted from houses as they don't have the means to pay the rent to the landlord. Here they are trapped in the human trafficking in exchange of food, house, medical assistance, and especially the forced prostitution. Not able to cover their basic needs in terms of food and hygiene. 
shortage in, and gap in funding, we should keep providing the crucial and needed support for the victims, and the gap in funding would hinder our ability to answer the increasing risks. Shortage in donor support for the gender-based violence and the human trafficking survivors among all nationalities. Caritas Lebanon is committed to help victims become survivors, stop the cycle of violence from repeating itself. Here they learn to hope. Our services or our help uh, is provided in three shelters, uh, 14 community centers, one office at the retention center and at the Beth Alif School for migrants and refugee children. Our direct services are first the warm embrace and the active listening, the social and psychosocial assistance, legal aid, free consultations, representation and courts, vocational trainings, life skills activities, shelters for gender-based violence survivors, post-shelter assistance, medical humanitarian assistance, case management, safe shelters for victims of human trafficking, specialized school for migrant and refugee children, 24 seven days a week hotline, voluntary return assistance reintegration, and assistance for detainees in the retention center and other prisons. As indirect services, we have with the uh, Lebanese General Security uh, the uh, reception at Beirut Airport, the community outreach, pastoral care activities. We have the work with the law enforcement uh, the, to promote, uh, our work is to promote as well the international uh, days and the migrants' rights uh, through uh, media and awareness campaigns, round tables with state and non-state actors, and pre-departure and orientation trainings in country and in the uh, home countries. The majority of trafficking victims in Lebanon are female migrant workers, refugee women and children and adolescent girls, and especially for the migrant workers, they are coming with the expectation to work in dignified conditions. Emergency safe shelters are essential to support survivors of human trafficking and build resilience for durable solutions to succeed. Caritas Lebanon acts as a major lead in the provision of safe shelters for women and children in Lebanon. Here we maintain three shelters to provide temporary emergency care and for victims and survivors of human trafficking and persons at risk to address immediate protection concerns where a future uh, filled with equality, hope, empowerment, and encouragement is provided. Our first shelter was established in 1998, and open up to talk in a safe space is very important for these survivors, and the positive impact is highly achieved. I mention here what a survivor said, I believe in stories, and I believe if I tell my story to even one person, it can empower them to survive their own. The progress made through the residents at the shelter has been remarkable for most survivors. As one also claimed for another resident, you are not a victim for sharing your story. You are a survivor setting the world on fire with your truth. And you never know who needs your light, your warmth, and raging courage. And thank you. Merci beaucoup. Euh, encore des paroles très fortes. Euh, je vais, pour finir ces interventions, euh, donner la parole à Mikiko Otani, qui est présidente du Comité des droits de l'enfant de l'ONU. C'est particulièrement important pour nous de prendre ce temps concernant les enfants qui sont une des euh, cibles particulières des trafiquants. Thank you for the opportunity for me to be part of this side event to discuss human trafficking in armed conflict and post-conflict situations from the perspective of children and armed conflict. The Committee on the Rights of the Child is a treaty body to monitor the implementation of the Convention on the Rights of the Child by its 196 state parties. The Committee's monitoring mandate also covers the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on Involvement of Children in Armed Conflict, which we call OPAC, adopted by the United Nations General Assembly in 2000. This optional protocol strengthens the legal framework for the protection of children from the recruitment and use by armed forces and armed groups. This is the positive development of child rights. However, unfortunately, I have observed 
the tendency of failure to address the issues of children and armed conflict holistically and comprehensively under both the Convention and the OPAC. Trafficking in children in armed conflict is exactly such a case to fall in a gap between the Convention and the OPAC. Contrary to the need to be addressed as a child rights issue under both the Convention and the OPAC. While the OPAC fo focuses on child rights to be protected from the recruitment and use by armed forces and armed groups, the Convention on the Rights of the Child that provides protection of broader range of children, child rights, continues to apply in armed conflict situations and, of course, in post conflict situations, needless to say. Trafficking in children itself is a serious violation of child rights, explicitly recognized in Article 35 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Armed conflict situations can intensify existing trends of trafficking or lead to new forms of trafficking in children due to increased vulnerability of the situations of children and their families, including unsecure emergency situations, loss of livelihood, displacement, separation of families, closures of schools, lack of access to child protection services. Trafficking can occur both in and out of crisis affected areas within countries as well as crossing borders. Trafficking is used for recruitment and use of children by armed groups prohibited under the OPAC, as well as for forced marriages, sexual exploitations, or child labor, which are all violations of child rights under the Convention. These negative nexus and multiple forms of child rights violations involved in trafficking in children in armed conflict requires special attention both as a serious child rights violation itself and as a measure for recruitment and use by armed groups and sexual and other forms of exploitation of children. Special attention and measures are required for all aspects of prevention, identification, prosecution of perpetrators, protection, recovery and rehabilitation of child victims. It is critically important that all relevant UN bodies and mandates address this issue of trafficking in children and armed conflict under the respective mandate, but also work jointly in cooperation with states and civil society to raise awareness of the issue, clarify the legal framework, and make recommendations for prevention, protection, recovery, and integration, and access to justice and remedies. Thank you for your attention. Merci beaucoup. Ça a été un petit peu un marathon de, de différentes personnes, mais c'est important, euh, je pense, de pouvoir euh, entendre euh, différentes, euh, différents points de vue sur cette question. Euh, je propose éventuellement, euh, si l'un ou l'autre dans la salle euh, ou à distance veut prendre la parole, euh, c'est possible maintenant. J'en profite pour remercier euh, le Costa Rica, Pologne, Malte, Italie, et Roumanie qui ont soutenu cet événement. C'était important pour nous de, de sentir le soutien d'un certain nombre de pays. Et je vois là que la Pologne veut intervenir. Et ensuite la Roumanie. Pologne. Merci beaucoup, madame. At the outset, I would like to thank Order of Malta for the initiative for organizing this event as well as... Uh, uh, My appreciation to the panelists who, whose testimonies was very, very touchy and, and, and very strong. Uh, human trafficking remains, as we heard, a serious challenge for international committee, but also for public authorities and law enforcement uh, agencies. And we clearly see that from our uh, perspective, the Polish one, And the Russian unprovoked and unjustified invasion of Ukraine forced millions of Ukrainian citizens and others to flee 
seeking safety in Poland and other European countries. And unfortunately, as, as mentioned, uh, Madame uh, Kowinska, that the aggression is also open an opportunity for the activation of various types of criminal groups seeking to make a quick profit by taking advantage of dramatic situation of people fleeing the war. Uh, is, Poland is taking a measure to combat and prevent human trafficking as specified in adopted in Poland national action plan against human trafficking. And we have implemented a number of comprehensive measures, aided among others at efficiently diagnosing cases of human trafficking, constant monitoring of this phenomenon, providing support and protection to victims, conducting training and proposing legislative uh, cases. And in order to address emerging threats stemming from Russian war of aggression against Ukraine and combat phenomenon of trafficking of human beings, we decided to increase the resources for the task of the National Intervention and Consultation Center for Victims of Human Trafficking by almost 40%. We have also developed the special procedures for verification of legality of operation of foreign entities declaring their willingness to provide assistance to refugees from Ukraine and for dealing with foreign minors crossing the border. These activities were also supported by the information campaign. So we launched a campaign titled Don't Trust Bordersly, Don't Become a Victim of Human Trafficking. In conclusion, I would like to, to underline the importance to, 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 for the accountability of those who perpetrated the human trafficking. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. I will actually be short because we are indeed running out of time. I would uh, only like to, I had many things prepared and <laughs> many, um, this, this, this discussion, this topic deserves much more attention for, uh, from us and many more discussions in all uh, relevant for us. I would just for now like to thank you distinguished organizers and speakers for having us here today to participate in this side event on this crucial topic for, uh, for human rights, which Romania is honored to co-sponsor and the poignant examples uh, were put forward by Madame Holinskar testimony of indeed the disastrous effects of trafficking of human uh, beings on the, on the lives of the most vulnerable persons uh, during conflict situation. For us, for Romania, it's a top priority, the fight against trafficking human beings, and we believe that uh, it requires vigorous and concerted action of, from all countries. And indeed, as it has been presented by Madame Ferna, uh, Russia's aggression, military aggression against uh, Ukraine took a toll on us as well. And we had to put up, uh, put on measures uh, on many levels to, to, to manage to uh, work this out with Ukraine. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Les propositions qui ont été faites euh, et qu'il va falloir euh, enrichir maintenant, euh, que peut-on faire Eh bien, nous pouvons analyser mieux les phénomènes, c'est un des premiers aspects. Sensibiliser le grand public euh, aux questions d'exploitation de, 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 et, et de traite pour euh, pouvoir aussi faire des alertes précoces des personnes. Enregistrer les enfants à la naissance, euh, ça aussi pour euh, éviter après euh, que ceci euh, soit euh, pris et, et emmené ailleurs. Travailler ensemble lorsque les enfants sont, euh, sont libérés aussi. Euh, veiller à ce que les besoins spécifiques de chacun soient pris en compte de manière globale. Surveiller la mise en œuvre de la Convention des droits de l'enfant, mais aussi des protocoles additionnels. Être attentif euh, particulièrement à la vulnérabilité des personnes. On devra aussi euh, travailler sur les données statistiques pour pouvoir permettre de euh, faire en sorte qu'on connaisse mieux le sujet et qu'on y réponde mieux. Et puis, 
il faut bien sûr continuer toute notre aide directe aux personnes qui sont victimes de traite, écoute active, aide sociale, juridique, formation, etc. Et aussi l'aide indirecte, c'est-à-dire la sensibilisation des, formes, des forces de l'ordre, de la justice, euh, la promotion des journées internationales des droits des migrants, des campagnes de sensibilisation, etc. C'est tous ensemble qu'on arrivera à changer les choses. Et il faut vraiment que ce travail entre institutions internationales et nationales, entre institutions et NGO, société civile, syndicats, soit la plus forte possible. Merci beaucoup à tous de, pour votre participation. Et euh, vous pourrez nous demander euh, aux organisateurs euh, les PowerPoint, les textes des uns et des autres, si vous voulez reprendre les choses. Merci et à bientôt. Merci à tous.